Good afternoon. How are y'all doing? I appreciate y'all coming over to see about our GPA calculations. How many of you know how to calculate your GPA already? How many of you know what GPA actually stands for? Instructors don't count on the back. How many students know what GPA stands for? Well, somebody tell me. Grade point average. That's right. And you want to have a good grade point average, right? Thing to remember when you're calculating your grade point average here is that any transfer credits or articulated credits, or if you take a credit by exam, that's not calculated in your GPA. Now, if you're in a competitive admit program, and by that I mean if you're going into something like nursing or radiology or clinical lab, something that is a competitive admit, then some of those scores may be used. But just for your regular GPA, they're not. How do you calculate a GPA? To calculate a GPA, you have to know how many credits you're taking. You can find that on your schedule. You can find it in the uh, catalog. You can find it on unofficial transcript. For example, an English class is three credit hours. Uh, computer class is three credit hours. College survival strategies, and I've got that wrong, it's two credit hours. I put three up there, but it's two credit hours. <laughs> Your quality points depend on what your grade is in the class. If you get an A in the class, you're going to get four quality points. A B in the class, you're going to get three. C in the class, you get two. A D, you get one quality point. If you make an F or if you withdraw failing, you get zero quality points, and that does count in your GPA. So to calculate your GPA, you multiply the number of credit hours by whatever your grade is, the quality points that I just told you. So is this example in the computer class, you've got three credits. You make a C in the class, that's two quality points. So you multiply the three times the two to come up with six overall quality points. Now remember that college survival strategies is an institutional credit and it does not carry any weight in your GPA. Any learning support classes also do not carry any weight in your GPA because those are institutional credits. Okay, to calculate it, you're going to add the credit hours and then you're going to add those quality points that you've multiplied out and you divide your total quality points by your total credit hours and that gives you your GPA. I know you've heard us talk about different types of GPA. You've heard of semester GPAs, you've heard of cumulative GPAs, you may have heard of program GPAs. What we're talking about there, when we're talking about the semester GPA, this is your academic GPA for this semester. Now, this is what we base our president's list on. If you have a 3.75 GPA, then you're on the president's list. If you fall below a 2.0, then you're going to be placed on academic probation. If you go come back the next semester, it goes over a 2.0, you're back in good standing. If you fall below a 2.0 for two consecutive uh, semesters, then you're going to be placed on academic suspension. And please keep in mind what I'm talking about is academics. A lot of times students get confused between academics and financial aid. Financial aid uses different rules and regulations than what I do, so putting you on financial aid suspension or probation may be a totally different GPA than what your academic is. Okay, your cumulative GPA is your GPA for every class that you've taken at Southeastern Tech. Let's say you were here 10 years ago, you had a GPA at that time, it's going to add in with whatever you're taking now and it's a total GPA and that's your cumulative GPA. And this is the GPA that financial aid uses. Whereas we're using semester most of the time for our probation suspension, they are using your cumulative. So that's every class that you've ever taken here. You also have a program GPA. So uh, when you re get ready to graduate, what we look at is just those classes that you've taken that go toward that program. And you have to have a 2.0 GPA to, in order to graduate. This is also the one that we use for your honor graduate status. You've got to have a 3.75 GPA or higher to 
be an honor graduate. So if you're looking at your program, let's say you're, since most of y'all are in cosmetology, say you're taking cosmetology classes this time and you get your GPA and next semester you decide you want to go to healthcare assistant and you've got a GPA there and then you come back in and you're back in cosmetology again. Well, everything that just for the cosmetology classes is what we're counting in that program GPA, but we do go back and pick up anything that we're using to let you graduate. Okay, we also have a competitive admit GPA. If you're trying, to, is anybody in here in healthcare assistant or healthcare science? Okay. All right, if you're in those and you're trying to get in, let's say, the nursing program or rad tech or dental hygiene, something like that, then there are certain courses that we use to see if you've got the GPA to get in the course. For example, if you're trying to go into the nursing, then there's six classes that we look at for the GPA. You have to have seven classes to get in, but that includes the college survival strategies, which we don't count. It doesn't count in your GPA. And remember, it's always with program GPAs, it is the last course that you take is what we're going to count. So if you took English two semesters ago and you made a C and you come back and you make an A the next time, then that A is going to stand. Anytime you repeat a course, the last one that you take is what's going to stand. I just want to caution the student on retaking a course because if you retake a course, let's say you made a, a C a couple of years ago and you decide, well, I'm going to get this grade up and I'm going to make an A and you come in and you go for two weeks and you decide, I don't want this class anymore and you drop it, well, it's too bad, you've got to take it for sure the next time because that W is what's going to stand. So always be cautious if you're trying to retake a class. Do we have any questions? Now come on. Everybody's always coming by my office and asking questions. Yes, ma'am. Well, the thing is, you've got to keep your grades up. Now, with HOPE, it used to be that you could have a HOPE grant, you could maintain a 2.0 GPA. Well, now you have to maintain a 3.0 GPA to get HOPE at all. So you want to keep that GPA up, and it's always based on the cumulative GPA, not the semester. So if you were here several years ago and your grades were not good, even if you're making good grades now, that can still bring that GPA down. There are no book vouchers anymore. Those were went away last fall, right? Yes. Yeah. The, there was changes in the HOPE regulations and those went away last fall. You don't receive HOPE at all if it falls below a 3.0. Now you still don't get 100% tuition anymore. It's it's 90%. Mm -hmm. And it's the 30th hour. Yeah, and it's, it's the 30th hour. So if you come in here, you want to make sure you do good on your first 30 hours because that's where it's going to base. We check at 30 hours, 60 hours, and 90 hours. That's where we look at the GPAs. Now, Ms. Wilson's going to have to answer pale. I don't know enough about pale. Okay, with pale. Just make sure you maintain a 2.0, but now is something coming into play. Um, you can only see pale up to 600%, and then pale is no longer not eligible for pale once you reach that uh, point. But you can receive pale, but not receive hope. As long as you maintain a 2.0 and a good standing. What did you mean, six dollars But see, <laughs> There's a new related that you can better under, uh, explain that, better rebel from that. Has said, okay, no more lifetime pay. Once a student has, I think it's for six years, like mm -hmm. six years, 
you know, some students come in and out no longer. So we calculated from ever since they started. We had like kind of 10 years ago and just now coming back. Let me ask you something. I don't know if y'all are even aware of this or not, but we've been out talking about this yesterday. We often have students that, for whatever reason, will complete your program entirely or complete your program and maybe still need a full course like in or something like that. If they have been gone over two years from our program, we have a refresher they have to take before they'll sign to stay for like this because things change on the state board, you know, they can't sign and have them go off and do poorly because it counts against us. Well, it pays for that, that refresher course, which is our last two practices, is actually what the refresher course is made of. You can only take it twice. That's something else new that's come into play. Um, the peak courses, you have to be careful about those. Um, you may need to come back. Each student may have a different circumstance, so you may need to come by the financial aid office and speak with us. Let us know what's going on. But now you only can repeat a class twice. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Just so you'll know, you can look in the catalog, I believe it's under academic regulations and the grades, and there's examples of how to calculate a GPA if, if you didn't catch all of this that we're doing. I have any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Every, every course that you take, will it always change your GPA or will it sometimes not? The only time it doesn't count your GPA is if it's an institutional credit, which would be like college survival strategies or learning support. Otherwise, it's going to count in your GPA. It's, it's possible that it wouldn't move it if it's just one three hour course. So you say something like CLLL. Yes. It doesn't count for their GPA. Right. But we know that they have to successfully complete yes. the Yes, for financial aid. For financial aid, mm -hmm. does uh, CLLL count for that? Yes. Yes. Yes, it does count in financial aid, just doesn't count in your GPA. But everyone has to complete college survival strategies with a C or better, or you can't graduate from your program, unless you're in a certificate that does not have any kind of uh, gen ed courses in it, like English, math. I did have someone ask yesterday where they could find their GPA. Do you know where to find your GPA? If you go out and you look at your grades at the end of the semester, your GPA is going to be there, your semester GPA and your cumulative GPA. And you can also pull an uh, academic transcript off a of banner web, and that will show you every GPA for every semester, and it will also show you your cumulative GPA. So if you're questioning that, you can always look there. Does everybody know how to get on banner web? Okay. All right, we're going to do one last thing. We're going to calculate a GPA. So if you want to turn over and flip on the back of those and calculate your GPA on your uh, survey form. Let's say you've taken an English class, it's three credits, and you make a C in the class. You're taking math, it's three credits, and you make a B in the class. You're taking psychology, it's three credits, and you make a D in the class. You're taking college survival strategies, it's two credits, and you make an A in the class. Now somebody tell me what your GPA is. Does anybody have it calculated already? Okay, what is it? Yeah. 
What did you come up with when you calculated it? Has anybody else got it calculated? You have a 2.0 GPA. The College Survival Strategies class does not count, so the A doesn't count in that. You've got three classes, three credits apiece. If you do the math out, it'll come out to a 2.0. You can almost look at that one and see you've got a D, you've got a B, and you've got a C. And that's going to be a 2.0. Do we have any other questions? Can everybody calculate their GPA now? Okay, well that's all I have for you today and I appreciate you coming. <laughs>